talk to us about the process. This is, I assume, an enormous logistical and technological challenge. How does it work? Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Emily. And obviously now that humanity is kind of transitioning out of the development phase for the vaccine, we now face a new challenge, which is how do we distribute it equitably and quickly to the people who really need it? Um, Ghana this week became actually the first African country to receive vaccine as part of the COVAX facility. And then in partnership with UPS and Zipline, they are delivering this vaccine instantly and autonomously out to thousands of different hospitals and health facilities throughout the country um, in the exact right dose, exact, basically exactly when you need it and where you need it um, in order to reduce waste and ensure that people who live in rural areas get the same access as those who live in cities. So how do you do it? I mean, I assume keeping them at the right temperature is one of the most important things. How do you keep them cold on route and make sure that when they arrive, they are ready to go? Well, the neat thing is Zipline spent the last four years across Rwanda and Ghana serving thousands of hospitals and primary care facilities, delivering a wide range of medical products. A lot of those products are cold chain dependent or short shelf life or have really just sensitive handling requirements. So the infrastructure to deliver those kinds of products already exists, and it's something we have a lot of experience with. Um, the way it's working today with the vaccine is that the vaccine basically lands in the airport. UPS transports it to either large hospitals or directly to zipline distribution centers. And then from those distribution centers, we package that vaccine into a, a small box that goes into an autonomous aircraft. That aircraft can fly um, out to any hospital or health facility within range of the distribution center. And we're able to do, I mean, today, zipline, each zipline distribution center is able to do hundreds of deliveries a day um, of, you know, of vaccines and also of, of lots of other products. I mean, it's also worth mentioning, you know, just in the last year, Zipline delivered a million doses of normal vaccines, which are also it's a little easy to lose sight of in the pandemic. But, you know, health systems have to keep doing all this stuff they were doing before, plus this new kind of vaccination effort. Now, as I understand it, you haven't delivered or you're not delivering COVID vaccines in the U.S. yet. Where are you in that process? Well, as part of the pandemic, actually, uh, we launched with a, a partner called Navant Health, which is one of the biggest, most innovative hospital systems uh, uh, in North Carolina. Um, over the last year, we've been delivering PPE products with them to frontline health workers by delivering from a central location to uh, uh, hospitals and, and health facilities. We're definitely, we think it's very likely that as other countries start to see the way that Ghana is using this technology in order to provide equitable access, they're going to follow suit. Um, it's just, you know, those, those discussions are still happening and, and we can't speak for our, for our partners. What about Arkansas, where you do have a partnership with Walmart? Could we see vaccines be delivered there? Uh, you know, I, I would put it into the same. Walmart is actually in an amazing position, obviously, especially when it comes to delivering these services to people in, who live in the rural parts of the U.S. And I just read an article yesterday talking about how pharmacy deserts, these are these areas where people live far away from pharmacies or hospitals in rural parts of the U.S. These are going to be the folks who are often most vulnerable to the, to, to the pandemic and who are least likely to get vaccinated via traditional means. Um, so a partner like Walmart that Zipline already has that really does an amazing job of getting to those rural populations is, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really exciting. We can't, you know, we can't necessarily announce something for Walmart today, but <laughs> suffice it to say, we think that, you know, a, a lot of our partners are going to want to use um, the technology in the same way that the Ghanaian government does. Well, we will be watching and waiting for news anxiously. Um, you know, you have overcome so many technological and regulatory hurdles to get to this point. Can you give us an update on the permitting status with the FAA? You know, the, the great news is that Zipline you know, has, a, we basically form a, a very close partnership with the regulator in every single country that we launch in. Today, Zipline operates in Ghana, Rwanda, and the United States, and we're planning to add a few more countries to that list before the end of the year. Um, in every country, it's always, a, it's, it's a little bit of a give and a take. Um, in the, U the U.S. has one of the most complicated airspaces in the world, and so you know, we're currently operating under some exemptions. We're uh, planning to transition to basically full-scale um, national certification of the system in the coming months. I won't bore people, but you know, suffice it to say, I think the technology in already operating at national scale in other countries is going to be operating at national scale in the U.S. way sooner than people would otherwise believe. 
So give us then the longer term outlook on how you plan or expect to scale, you know, not just in the United States, but around the world as regulations open up and as opportunity opens up and as more people and countries and governments get more comfortable with the service that you provide. You know, I actually would say that's already happening. We've seen over the last four years, this go from people looking at it thinking, oh, it's totally science fiction, it's completely impossible, to now, you know, government officials, uh, regulators are just basically bringing themselves to existing distribution centers, seeing how it works, and then starting to think, okay, how would we use this to change our own healthcare system? The pandemic is obviously accelerating this because suddenly it's really, really important for every health system on the planet to figure out how to reach people closer to where they live rather than asking elderly or vulnerable populations to come into a hospital. Um, and then most importantly, from a regulatory perspective, you know, it's a lot easier to get regulatory approval for this kind of um, technology when every flight is potentially saving a life. We think that that's why healthcare logistics is the right place to start. Um, and at the end of the day, Zipline's mission is that where you live should not determine whether you live. And so our goal in the long run is to build the first logistics system that serves all humans equally.